Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100 pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. I did not see this one coming. Were you ready for this? Who would have thought one month ago all that would be transpiring, not just locally and not just in the United States, but all around the world? We've never seen anything like this. I know I wasn't ready. Two weeks ago, my family were here. They were all just casually going about, you know, having fun, playing miniature golf, swimming, going out in the boat. We went to one of my brother's speeches down in Sarasota. My mom went with me to do a women's luncheon in Webster, Florida. It was just a great time, leisurely, relaxed, having fun, eating and playing. And you remember when Solomon said, eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow we may die? That's kind of what I feel like. I know when you're listening to this, things may have already transpired that don't fit, but we're just about a week or less than two weeks into this, and I can't believe everything is shut down and people are scrambling for toilet paper and food and pushing each other out of the aisles and Well, here's kind of the two sides of this, because, you know, there are different ways to look at this. We often say, well, you know, we know that there are catastrophes that are happening in this world, but how can you be so carefree during all of this? That's what some of my friends say to me. Can't you see that our whole world is being changed forever? Well, when I was asked these questions, I would say, I kind of feel like it was after 911. I'm old enough, even though I was in um, elementary school when the JFK shooting and the killing of our president occurred. But I remember the same thing fear and being punched in the stomach almost is how it felt like after 911. And the other thing, of course, with the JFK, we were taught to duck, roll, and cover. We practiced getting under our desks in case of nuclear fallout. And then I was doing radio program in St. Louis when the whole issue of 911 happened, and nobody could have even imagined. I took one of the radio recorders with me from uh, KJSL, where I was on air in St. Louis. And one week after the 911 happened, I had a speaking engagement in uh, Long, where was that? Long Island, New York, which is right across the water from where the tragedy occurred with the Twin Towers. And I interviewed people, and they had these two sides too. One side was, well, it's already happened now. Let's just use it for good. How can we be prepared for next time? What can we tell our children? In the school where I was going to speak, I went into one of the classrooms, and a teacher showed me a jar. The kids have collected little pieces of paper. It looked like ticker tape. It was, indeed, from across the water, the stock market, when everything had happened. Many of the files were blown away. Many of the papers were just floating in the air. And as they were connecting these and collecting them both, It was almost like, what is this? How could this happen to our country? I don't know. I do not have an answer to that. You know as much as I do about the viral implications and the spread and getting ready and preparing and being safe. On the other side, when we're hearing the stock market's crashing and we're going to be in just like Italy in a couple of weeks, everybody's going to be wearing masks and gloves for the rest of their lives and no more cruise lines and airlines. And, you know, there's two ways of looking at things, optimistically, pessimistically, and I choose the third. Let's be realistically watching this. Psalm 91, written in the Old Testament, says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, He's my fortress, my God, and in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence, the plagues. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wing shall thou trust that his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You shall not fall by the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes. A few years ago, my family was traveling throughout the South, and My brother and I had just gone into this restaurant. It was a mom and pop shop where we were going to be having dinner, and we saw that there was a long line, so we were asking about how long would it take. And the woman came, and she said, it'll be about 10 minutes. You all can sit over to the side if you want to. So mom and dad chose to sit in the car, and my sister was there and my husband. And so my brother and I went to sit over in the corner where we just happened to notice that one of his favorite scriptures was written and framed on the desk. And as we read this, Psalm 91, there was a girl that was standing right outside the window that looked so despondent. And the woman from the restaurant had gone to talk to her. And she had been shaking her head and holding her head. And we finally asked the woman, is there something wrong with her? And The woman explained that she had been through a terrible tragedy in her family lately and that she really didn't want to live and that the woman had been giving her food whenever she would come because she didn't have a job. She was probably in her 20s, early 20s. So my brother and I went to talk to her. And when we brought her in and tried to show her this scripture, she showed us on her arm a tattoo that said Psalm 91. And we asked her if she knew that was there, and she said, No, I haven't been to church in years. And I told her my story about being a high school dropout and runaway, and that the worst time in my life when I was the nearest to death was not with the JFK shooting, was not with the Twin Towers, was not with Y2K, was not this that's happening now with the, with the coronavirus going around. It was my own personal hell on earth that I was creating. And it was at that point in my life on my third suicide attempt that I turned to God and I said, God, if you're really real, do something with this mess. And that's the same prayer that I've been praying all week, except I know now that he is real and that he will be doing something with this mess. Did we want this? No. Do we love it? No. Is it horrendous? Of course it is. Do we know how it's going to end up? No, we don't. But in the midst of it, this is a time for us to help others, to reach out to others, Uh, to pray for others, to tell others the good news that we have found in our own life. And that's exactly what I challenge you to do with this too, my friend. Fear not. God tells us that so many times in Scripture. He's got it under control whether we believe that or not and whether we see this or not. Father God, I pray for that one right now that is listening that is devastated, that is panicking, that is hurting, that is angry, that is shaking their fist at you or at China or at illness or at sickness or whatever it is. And I pray, God, that you would draw them closer to you, that this would be a time when you indeed would use what the enemy meant for harm, somehow for good. My friend, look up, watch and see, and see who you can help. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. 
Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.